What up, peoples? Welcome to the Al York Sports Show. And like I always try to come to y'all, I always try to get at it a little different. Before I start, let me just salute my boys from U.S. Bank, my boy Hannibal Lecter. I told you I was coming for you, man. And Tang Top Tito, man. Those are your new names, man. Y'all already know, man. I told y'all I was coming, man. I don't say shit and not do it, man. Salute to y'all, man. And um, basically, uh, to move on to uh, sports topics, uh, what I want to do this time, because, you know, I'm a true believer of, like, I'm using a, a rapper, for example. How I dictate a rapper's nice is, like, he's got to show me, like, he's an MC. He's got to be able to make songs. And last but not least, he's got the freestyle. Because if, when you freestyle, know how to make songs, and, and you are MC, to me, that's like the whole package. And of course, you know, delivery and skating on the beat and all that other stuff. But if your freestyle is sick on top of your music writing, then you definitely nice. So what I want to do, I want to freestyle this topic. Because, you know, all sports dudes, what we do, we write shit down, put it in our head, have a paper in front of us. You know, we all do that. I mean, it's hard not to do it that way. But how you really determine who's nice with it is a nigga that could do it without shit. But now, you know, I'm not going to hit y'all with, with statistics, individual numbers, because those, you know, I'm just freestyling. You dig what I'm saying? So let me start first with my man, Dwayne Beeman. Salute to you, D. Beeman. Mr. Stop Running. Six-round unanimous decision. Uh, my man, you the dude, man. I told you, man. That's why I fucked with you, man. I believe in you, man. But the fucked up shit is they got you fighting on the 30th already. Yo, these Mexican niggas are no joke, man. It's bad enough when they be working, they be breaking their backs, and now they trying to have motherfucking fighters break their back. I mean, I, that's a quick turnaround where you're going from June 9th to the 30th. You know, you ain't, you, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, you ain't fighting no bottom feeder. You fought a nigga that could fight, man. You know what I'm saying? Mexican cat was scrapping, but he just couldn't fuck with you. So salute to you on that victory. And June 30th, you know I'm definitely coming out. I'm going to hit you with them blasts. You ain't got nothing to worry about, D. Beeman. Uh, now, next topic. We freestyling. LeBron. LeBron James. Let me go with the LeBron Michael shit once again. Oh, this topic is just, it's a headache, man. Like, I molested this topic, man. Like, how much can I terminate something? That's like overkilling. Like, if I stab a nigga four times and I killed him, I don't need to keep airing a nigga out like the movie Grey when he was airing out the wolf and shit. I don't need a, that's called overkill, man. But you guys never stop, man. You guys are worse than Met fans. LeBron fans are worse than Met fans. Because it's every reason for y'all to know right now that he can't fuck with Mike and your niggas is still trying. Yo, he just got swept in a four-game series. I understand he lit it up. He did what he had to do. But the bottom line, the dude don't make nobody better, man. Like the way Jordan made them bums better. Magic made niggas better. Steve Nash made people better. And he ain't no, you know, crunch time. Give the ball to him. He gonna close you out. I mean, he did it a few times this year. But his whole career, that's not what he's made of, man. Listen, I love LeBron James, but... Y'all got to keep Mike out of his mouth. What y'all need to do is put Magic Bird and Kobe in with LeBron, man. Mike is so, so much surpassed the situation right now. Stop get Mike's name out of his mouth, man. Please, y'all. I don't want to hear Mike LeBron no more. Charles Barkley want to slap niggas when he hear that. I'm going to be nicer. You keep saying it, I'm going to come at y'all directly and blow y'all up on the video. I ain't going to physical contact you, nigga. Charles Barkley is not me. But come on, man. This, come on, man. You already know what the fuck it is. He just got swept. He laid down game four. I don't want to hear that shit no more. Jordan never fucking laid down. Win, loss, got swept, never laid down, bro. And, and with that, let's move on. Let's go to uh, LeBron's next possible destination. My theory is he's going to Houston. Or Philly. I don't think he's going to Boston. He's not going to do that Kyrie thing again. I would like to say San Antonio because he loves Popovich. But, you know, Kawhi's situation. And, and they don't pay guys like that. They're not going to pay two guys the whole, basically, salary and have a bunch of scrubs around it. Plus, Aldridge is signed. So, I don't see that happening unless he takes the pay cut. 
And, you know, if he takes a pay cut, Kawhi, him and Aldridge is not a bad three. But I think he can set himself in a better situation. Houston, to me, is my situation. Although I don't think Chris Paul has five years in him, or good, good solid years in him. But I think him and James Harden and Capella and whoever else they put around that unit could win. Could win the next three, four years, or at least go to that conference finals the next three, four years. You put them with the Sixers, the only problem is they got all the talent in the world, but I don't think LeBron want to be in a locker room with young niggas on their phones, you know what I mean, using WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook. I don't think he want to deal with that, and that's what's going to happen in Philly. All them young 25 and under cats, man, they all into the social media world. So L.A., only way I can see L.A., if they get George over there, which I'm not too high on anyway. I, don't, I think George lost a step. But I think if he goes to L.A., something else has to happen. Like, it's got to be like a dramatic trade to get Westbrook over there. Maybe they sell Lonzo, Randall, and a draft pick and get Russell. Because if you bring, you know, Westbrook, George, and LeBron, now you got something. And if you happen to keep Ingram or Kuzma, now you're working with something. And not to mention, he just bought a $21 million estate over there where, like one of my boys said, they ain't buy that for nothing. So, you know, you ain't going to spend that type of money not to be there. So, you know, it's looking like L.A. right now. I hate to say it because I was thinking Houston. But it is looking like L.A. And if he goes to either L.A. or Houston, he will win, I'll say, two at least chips out of the next five years. I'm not saying he's going to go two and five of the chips. They might not make it a few years. But I think they'll definitely win about two, three if he goes to L.A. or Houston in the next five years. I think he got about five solid years left. Nobody takes care of the body like LeBron James. Salute to LeBron James for that. Now let's roll over to uh, MLB, the Yankees. What else can I say about my team, man? We beating scrubs. We beating good teams. Now I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to win a chip. My boy Gil Mercado trying to put that in my mouth. Gil? I'm not saying that. Don't, don't have me happy and think because I'm happy I'm thinking they're going to win a chip. I'm just happy because every time I put a Yankee game on, we have a chance to win. That's bottom line. We're as good as anybody, bro. You know what I'm saying? And we did lose Montgomery for the year. Though we got Herman basically stepping up for him, don't trust him because he don't have enough experience, sort of like Jordan did. You know what I'm saying? But we still got to get that next elite pitcher. We need Gray to step up. We know what we're getting out of CC, which is five solid innings. Serban Reno's a fucking beast. And Tanaka's going to give us six innings every, every time out with a chance to win. We got to get another elite pitcher. I wish we'd have got Garrett Cole last year, but we didn't. So now I want to target, I want to target Jacob DeGrom from the Mets. I think DeGrom makes a perfect fit with the Yankees. The Mets should be selling right now because they're not going nowhere. So who better than to sell them to the Yankees? Yankees' farm system is stacked. I mean, we don't. We could do what the Cubs did like a few years ago where the Cubs never touched like, you know, the Alomar Juniors, the Baez, the Russells. Instead, they dealt with the Glebar Torres who was underneath, you know, McKinney, et cetera. Yankees got guys underneath they can trade for the ground. Like they can send Sheffield. McKinney, I won't touch Frazier. And uh, who else? I mean, I don't want to deal with Bird. I don't want to deal with Alan Duhall. Maybe uh, that other pitcher we got, uh, Adams. There you go, Chase Adams. So we can afford to give up Adams, uh, McKinney, and Sheffield, and let's get the Grom. Let's make that happen. Like I said, y'all freestyling right now. This ain't written. I'm just freestyling right now. And... Last but not least, the Vegas Knights. I'm repping their shit. That's right. I gave them out to win the Stanley Cup. I lost. There's no excuses. I'm here repping. But I did tell y'all to hedge out, to secure monies. So if you hedged out, you didn't lose no money. But I told you, I hedged out just to get your money back. If they win, you profit. They lost, like me. I lost. I broke even. But there's no excuses. I gave it out to win as a future bet. That loss. But from a money point of view, I broke even. And I hope a lot of y'all that follow me, especially on YouTube, broke even also. Because if y'all didn't, 
Y'all doing that greedy shit. That's kind of stupid. No need for that. You know what I'm saying? When you could have just, you know, got your money back or won like a nice little small margin of profits. Because they were still profits on a hedge. And with that, let me give y'all bonus coverage. Well, but you know, I'm freestyling or not. You're still going to get the bonus coverage, man. Onyx, baby. Yeah, man. A lot of things got to take place, man. Y'all need to tune into the shows every Friday. The pickup show. Me and Big Doc going to lead the way. You know, we got a team around us. Like I said, we got Jonelle, Nick Blaze, Holly Hot Wheels. I mean, yo, we got it, man. You know what I mean? We got a nice setting. Now it's on us, man. It's on us to fumble the rock, man. And trust me, man, I ain't fumbling the rock, man. You can put that shit on my mom. I ain't fumbling the rock, man. And I know my man Big Doc ain't fumbling the rock either. So tune into the pickup show, Al Yo Sports, East Coast, West Coast. Vegas strong, Vegas nights, nice. LES to the death. I'm a LES representer, lower deck, love y'all. Y'all already know what the fuck it is. Freestyle sports talk. You see me do it right now. Not too many motherfuckers gonna take this route. You know why? Cause they scared the fuck up. Al York sports, bringing it right y'all to y'all. New York walk, baby. Let's walk through the New York streets, baby. Onyx, love y'all niggas. 100, baby. Peace.